Welcome to project pack number 12. This is day 11. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And uh, we're going to work on a Zendala today. Ooh, a beautiful rena Renaissance Zendala. Yes. My favorite canvas. Right? And, uh, and this is a unstrung uh, one. And I'm just going to go straight to ink. I'm using my black pen. And I'm putting a lovely, really solid uh, black dot or orb slightly off center. And uh, that's an easy enough start. We right? Can, I can do that. We can do this. And this is going to be a really simple tangle. And I think it's going to look really complicated when it's done. But every step of the way is uh, pretty simple. So I worked with uh, learning this tangle and trying different ways. And this is drawings. And this is a tangle that Maria came up with. And it's absolutely stunning. And I am picking like a finger's width difference. And I'm just putting with my brown pen an S shape that lands on that dot. And I'm just going to figure out, you know, okay, well, how far from the edge-ish, like my finger. I'm going to draw an S shape. It's a very subtle S. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. Subtle. And uh, I'm not going to put too many of these in. I want to leave some space. So again, S shape. And you'll notice I'm rotating my tile each time. And since that dot is off center, and I'm going sort of from the same distance from the edge, those S shapes are all a little bit different lengths. And... I got room for one more here. So we got another S shape coming. And I'm always thinking about what's the most comfortable position for drawing whatever I am drawing. And I make that, you know, where my hand is. So now I'm looking for about two thirds. And on one side, and I'm going to aim for that two-thirds by drawing little arcs. So like one of the elemental strokes in Zentangle. And since these look like wings, what, what got me stuck at the beginning was I was trying to draw wings. <laughs> but I ended up figuring out a way that, for me, is a really easy way to tangle wings instead of even thinking about what it is that I'm doing. So I'm just putting in these arcs going from the tip of one and targeting about two-thirds on the other. And maybe I get there in three. If I don't, well, I could go and no, I think I'll just make that one three, but I, I think one of them may or may not be. Yeah, this one's four. So I'm not worried about how many arcs. I'm just putting in arcs to get to the other edge. How many, how many arcs does it take to get to the other side? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> now we know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So on that same concept of takeoff and land, I am imagining drawing an S shape almost to that center dot, but not getting there. And this is that, uh, you know, the idea of the feathers in this drawings. Very hard to say. <laughs> right. And it's spelled drawings. I you know, know. We, I know, we pronounce it draw rings, but it's drawings. Or drawings. In, I pronounce it drawings. <laughs> <laughs> it's the R in the, it's the, in the R. New England accent. Yeah. We always put R's in when there yeah. aren't, and then take not them out. when <laughs> they're right. Exactly. <laughs> so whatever I do in one place, I do every place, and that's that whole concept of uh, patterning, right? Mm -hmm. So this is pretty much all of the ink uh, 
a basic shape with the ink. And I'm going to approach shading as a pattern now. I just want to jump in here. That's his uh, brown chalk pencil that he cut in half because <laughs> he likes to work with small pencils. So don't be afraid that you don't have one of those. Right. You actually have one you have or two maybe two. <laughs> If you wanted to cut it in half right. like Rick is, yeah. So I'm going in all of those. Uh, uh, like the second feather. The second feather, the second and subsequent feathers, halfway. So I set these little games with myself in tangling. It's like, okay, I'll pick something, and then I'll just repeat it throughout the whole tangle, and or with across the whole tile. And then I'll look at that, and then I'll see what I want to do next. So having put that down, I'm now taking my tortillon, and even though I went only halfway, I'm pulling it as far as I can over to where the line ends. And that makes a nice uh, a soft gradation yeah. or browndation or here. Brownation. <laughs> brownation. <laughs> And without it starting or without it stopping too abruptly. And you might be able to tell I'm uh, having a very light touch. It, it doesn't need much. This paper is really wonderful because it grabs the uh, color without a lot of uh, effort. So I missed that one. We'll put some back in. And the reason I cut it, uh, the pencil, is I like being able to hold it at a low angle with the uh, end of the pencil in my palm. So we got that one. And now I'm going to, uh, okay, well, let's see, what next? So I'm going to get my white, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of highlight, and then we'll see what that looks like. So I'm again doing that idea of not going all the way in and just laying down a, uh, a dollop. Mm -hmm. Is that what we called it? A dollop? A dollop. A dollop Sounds of uh, chalk. I love to move the, ch the white chalk around. It has this creaminess um to mm. it that other chalk pencils don't have right. this it's just this it's such a nice tool i love it well it's this family secret formula of yeah. general pencil it's very cool so i'm looking at that and i'm thinking nah i want that white to go all the way in so now that i've made that choice i'll simply go and do that on each one so rick's designing this on the fly yes so a lot of times we we have a you know, first you do this, then you do that. But in this particular uh, situation, he's sort of just playing with it as he goes along, has no idea what it's going to look like. Right. And I, I did, before we did the, or before I did the uh, video, I did get my sequence of initial strokes to, to where I thought, okay, this would be a good way to show this tangle. But after that, um, all of this is being done. I've never done this before. Uh, so now I decided, well, I want to have some darkness where those, you know, feather inspirations uh, curve around. So I'll just go around on each one of those and, uh, and add that in. And the idea that I have in the back of my mind is to try to have white and dark next to each other so that there's a sense of contrast throughout. You know, I don't always do that, but isn't that amazing? I mean, that tortillon, it just looks like so beautiful, subtle. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's awesome. So again, I'm going to work with that over and under of, of the wings. So we've got like the wing elements and the feather elements. So just uh, put those, smooth that brown in there.
And remember, turning your tile and having the point of whatever your tool is to the edge that you're, you know, focusing on is a really big help. So if you remember that my idea of having light and dark, you know, on one side of the line uh, is dark, and then the other side I'm putting that white chalk. And I'm also sort of experimenting with putting some uh, highlights in the middle of that over and under of the, you know, the feather that's right next to the next wing. And as you're doing this, you know, when you're putting this down, it looks so different before you add, before you smooth it out with the tortillon. So just be... Uh, be patient. Yeah, yeah, be patient with, and, with and your work. Know that it works. Yeah. And you can always add more. Uh, it's mm -hmm. one of those things, you, you, you test out the, uh, the waters there and then um, buff it down with your tortillon and then you can add more if you want. So I picked up my brown tortillon because I'm, I'm now mixing the white and the brown, so I'd rather have the brown get browner than the white also get brown. And as soon as I started that, I thought, you know, I want to have all of the, the inside of this tangle be some, some variation of uh, brown or white chalk. So I'm just going in and, and layering down some, uh, some more chalk, because then I'm going to go back in and uh, put them all together with the tortillon. And wherever you put it, it really doesn't matter. It, it, just, it just becomes this beautiful. So it's actually part of the, if you if consider the fact that it's part of a pattern as opposed to a light source where we, in other art forms when you're learning to shade, there's always a light source mm -hmm. and then a shadow and this and a, uh, a secondary shadow and all, all those kind of things. And this is all about pattern. So at some point in time, once in a while, we may talk about a light source, but for the most part, the lights and the darks are part of, a significant part of the pattern. Exactly. So again, in that idea of the, the light and dark and the, and the chalk as part of the pattern, once I decide to do it in one element or one, one component of this tangle, I'll just do it in all of them because that's part of the patterning. So I just made it a little bit darker towards the center there. Smoothing it out. And again, very light touch, very light touch. You, you'll be so surprised how, how light you can need to go with that. So that's looking pretty good. I still want to, to have a little bit more contrast happening there. So I'm going to pick up my graphite pencil and with a nice pretty sharp tip I'm going to delineate the, the uh, wing elements. So it's almost like there are five wings coming off that center part. Let's see, I like what that does right there. That's kind of a a nice um, contrast, adding that gray. And you notice how obvious it is when you first put it down, but as you blend it in, it blends with the white and the brown, and it, it isn't that obvious anymore. And these are just all steps, so think of these as part of the pattern. I'm going back in and restating that lovely infinite hole there of, you know, it's like this is coming out of this marvelous field of unlimited possibilities here. And this is what we're, what's coming into this world almost. So as you use the chalk and the graphite, the lines get a little... Um, Muddy? Yeah, they get muddy, and it's almost like there's a, like a little piece of, uh, 
wax paper over them or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back in and restating those lines. And you can see it, again, you might not have noticed it, but it gets a little bit crisper and it really delineates one part from the other. And it's a great exercise in uh, controlling your pen. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you learn to do this as time goes on and those are kind of exercises which are a little more precise than most tangling uh, when you're going over an existing line. Take and your time, take your time, focus. And you may notice that just as it gets to that little center orb, I'm making the line just a little bit thicker. So it just has a tiny bit of weighting there. W-E-I-G-H-T. And yeah, what Maria said is like going over that line is like tracing your signature is very it's different hard. from signing your name. <laughs> That's right? a hard thing to do. And I'm uh, playing around with emphasizing these other lines because, you know, the chalk was going over it. And I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, ah, I, I, I'd rather weight it from the other side and have it be less precise as it gets to the inside. So let, let's do that. So almost all of the lines in this tangle I restate, and it is a really good exercise. And you'll notice that the arc is away from my hand. And for most people, I'm guessing, is that's more comfortable, you know, because you're sort of like pivoting on the heel of your hand. And uh, it's almost like your hand becomes a bit of a compass. And I, I didn't like that. You know, I, I want that to be a little de-emphasized as it comes to the middle. So you can always go back in and play with it. So again, we're, we're emphasizing the edge between light and dark. And that just enhances the whole sense of contrast. And at first you might not notice it, but if you were to like compare before and after, this, this has much more snap to it. And it's also fun tracing over the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's gouache time. So I'm working and uh, twirling my pen as I've learned, and I'm playing around with finding the the density of gouache that I want for this purpose. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to uh, cover the whole background with gouache. I guess I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> I'm, uh, we've really gone through our gouache on, on this, this one here. So after you uh, finish your pots of gold um, and, and experience the whole, whole thing with working with gouache, there are many different kinds you can find in, in your art supply stores. This uh, Turner's gouache, which is one of my favorites. In some of the other um, popular paint companies, they all make gouache and in gold, in different tints of gold. You can mm. get silver. You can, I, I used to get an orange gold that was my absolute favorite, and I used it all the time, and they stopped making it. So if anybody has an old tube of orange gouache gold, it turners, I would buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting out my okay. my, my request. <laughs> when I started, I uh, I left just a little. Um, I'm going all the way out to the edge on this because I want to have as little overlap as possible. Because by the time I get all the way around, that first bit of gouache is drying, and so this way. I won't have too much, you know, double layering there. But it, it uh, re, what do you call it? Uh, reconstitutes, Reconstitutes yeah. the line so that, it, you know, yeah. it's like working with watercolor. or yeah. Even, it's more like poster paint. Oh, that's true. It yeah. has a little grit to it. Yeah. Okay, so now you're not done with your, your painting until you put your brush away. 
and I rinse it out in water. And, and twist then, it. Can yeah. you see him twisting it so that you get a nice tip when it dries? So after after it dries, he this yeah. is a, a half hour to one hour drying time right there. Right. So we, we're down in the basement, and so I have the heater going, and I'm holding it in front of the heater, and and I, again I want a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to try out on this particular one, and see. Okay, how does that look? Just by adding a little graphite there, and I like that. I like that. So I liked it so much. <laughs> I'm going to do it on uh, every one. And for me, what the technique that I like is I just put it in a corner and then with the tortillon, I pull it out. So you, you could be holding it out at arm's length when you, when you uh, need to make a decision about something like this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a little difficult on camera here, but uh, don't hesitate to hold it out like you're a really famous artist and you are analyzing a very important part of your day. Oh, you are and you are. You are and you are. And some people like to put the graphite down and then pick up the tortillon. I know Molly likes to do that and, and I really, you, you, the advantage to that is you have a really good sense as you're going of how it's developing. Um, in this case, I went and did all of one step and then are going back and doing all of the next step. You know, turning the tile each time. Except when you did the first one. Except when I did the first one. I wanted to see how, how that looked. So we get all of these done. And, and you can see the, the increasing uh, contrast on the edge there because it really snaps with the gold. And that, that's what I wanted. So most of the light is against the dark, is against the light. I'm going to enhance that little area where they, they sort of vortex in or out of that. Soften that a bit. Okay. So this has been a study in um, contrast and shading, more so than any of our other tiles. Right. So he, Rick's going to take his uh, brown chalk and uh, pretty heavily go around the edge there with it. Um, it, it disappears a lot. I mean, yeah. that, it, more so than a graphite pencil, this chalk pencil, once you start uh, rubbing it in with the uh, tortillon, it uh, softens quite a bit. You can see right even just right there how much it softens. Yeah. When I was a little kid, I had this... Uh, phase of making treasure maps. And I would draw maps on a piece of like type of typing paper, you know. Oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> and then I would, you know, when my parents weren't looking. Burn the edges. I did <laughs> Burn it the edges. <laughs> and then, you know, like this, you know, make it like a little dirty and burnt edges. Oh. And it was like, oh, all of a sudden it became really special. And so that, that's my inspiration here. I remember doing that. But like Maria said, you can see it's almost like it, it something happened there, but it's very subtle. And uh, now I'm going to take the graphite and just a little bit on the edge. So, you know, the, the brown I probably did in, what, a half inch or more. Mm -hmm. And this is just like barely a quarter inch, eighth inch maybe. And then I'm blending that into the brown. And it's sort of like burning it. Yeah, it, it is. And so there's my treasure map. So I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you do. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. See you later. Bye now. Bye.